Welcome to Deadball TV, everybody. Your boy Jack is back with another video covering Asian football. If you like videos talking about the Asian game, you should hit subscribe because this is definitely the best place on YouTube to see this kind of content. I'm going to be honest, these groups have been out for a minute and I apologize for taking so long to make this video, but I was busy. But today I got time, so let's get into it. Group A, Qatar, India, Kuwait, and either Afghanistan or I'm assuming Mongolia. I'm going to say right now that if Qatar and Carlos Quiroz do not steamroll this group, that is rather embarrassing because I really think the only team that's going to offer much resistance at all is the Indian national team. I can already see several Indian national team fans going for the comments going for my neck saying that I don't know what I'm talking about I'm an Indian national team hater that they're next up they're gonna win the Asian Cup look bro I appreciate confidence and I respect how you guys feel about your own national team but you're simply not good and I think second is where India will finish right behind Qatar comfortably behind Qatar and uh, that'll be it Mongolia got absolutely bodied by Japan in the last edition of round two I think they lost 14 nothing in a game it was an American football score it was not good and Afghanistan they got touched up in the recent CAFA so yeah I'm not really expecting much from either of these teams group B we got the Samurai blue Syria North Korea interesting and I'm assuming either Myanmar or MAC might be Macau I really don't even know the main storyline here is probably North Korea being in this group with Japan there was a famous World Cup qualifier in which the Japanese national team traveled to Pyongyang for a qualifier and I believe they lost that game one nothing I don't know how often they played since but I can tell you right now that's going to be a very intense fixture. Syria is in this group as well, and they're actually a pretty decent national team. They did get six points from the third round of World Cup qualifying in 2022. I think they'd probably get a good result at some point in this qualifying, whether it's a draw at home against Japan or possibly beating North Korea. North Korea, that one's going to be really hard, folks. I'm not going to lie. It's an intimidating atmosphere to go play in. If y'all can pull up some footage of games in North Korea, you should definitely do so. It's, uh, it's a blast from the past, let's say. And then Myanmar, I think they just get absolutely cooked. Again, one of those teams that they might be giving up some football scores to the Japanese national team this time around. And if MAC is in fact Macau, God help them. I'm thinking Japan wins both of those fixtures by at least seven goals. If there's any group in which you guys think there's going to be a big upset, definitely let me know in the comments. You know I love talking Asian ball with y'all down below. Don't be scared. Let me know your opinion. As brazen as it is, that's all I want to say. Group C, we got South Korea, China, Thailand, and either Singapore or Guam. This on paper I think is objectively the strongest of the three groups we've seen so far that Korea China game is going to be competitive in both fixtures but especially in China although let's be honest Korea will probably end up winning both of them one nothing two to one although under Jurgen Klinsmann man you you never know you never know I think Thailand are the toughest like third pot team that we've seen so far I mean North Korea have a very intimidating environment but in terms of a national team I don't even know how many games they played since the the pandemic I don't even know if they've been outside the country so I would need to look into that myself but the Thai they're a good team they're a good team always competitive always doing well in the Southeast Asian tournaments this will be a moderate challenge for the Koreans but the Thai bro they have an opportunity here to possibly sneak in as either the second team or one of those best third place teams that eventually qualify. And then Guam have no chance in hell. I'm just being honest right now. And then Singapore, I think they're actually pretty good. Again, for like a fourth pot team, I think this is the best one that we've seen so far. I certainly would rate them higher than Myanmar or Mongolia. Um, it's a good group. For round two, this is a good group. Next up in group D, we got Oman as the pot one team. Very interesting. Kyrgyz Republic. Malaysia, and then either Chinese Taipei or Timur. Oh, I gotta be honest with y'all. This group is looking dry. I think I have to label this the beef jerky group because there's really nothing moisturizing whatsoever about Oman versus Chinese Taipei. For any Asian casuals out there, I don't know if Group D is gonna be something that uh, really draws you in. You know, I, I don't know what the viewership numbers are gonna be here, but I assume pretty low. The fact that the heavyweight feature is Oman versus Kyrgyz Republic 
Oh, that's rough. These two teams actually met recently, funny enough, in the CAFA third place match in which Oman won that game 1-0. Like, I'm sorry, the fact that they're the pot one team, bro, this is just really, really lackluster. Malaysia, maybe they squeak something against the Kyrgyz Republic. I'm looking at the Kyrgyz Republic record. Been a lot of L's recently. I mean, their th the most recent win is a 3-0 forfeit win over Afghanistan. Like, it's it's really peak right now for, for Kyrgyz Republic and for Group D. Not a fan of this one. Let's pray to God that Group B is a little better here. We got Iran, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and the winner of Hong Kong versus Bhutan. I'm going to say right now the Cantonese got that one in the bag. I think Hong Kong is definitely going to be that fourth team. I've seen them a few times at the EAFF E1 Championship, which is like a domestic tournament involving Hong Kong, South Korea, Japan, and China sometimes. And I feel like they're okay. They're an okay team. I, I think they're definitely good enough to beat Bhutan and maybe even sneak a result against Turkmenistan. But I think that's where it ends. Uzbekistan are probably the most fascinating Asian team that nobody talks about recently. They will be playing the U.S. men's national team in September in the United States. I think that's going to be a really good litmus test for for both teams. I think people see Uzbekistan and they see the fact that they haven't made it to the World Cup. They see the fact that they were eliminated in round two of the 2022 qualifiers and they think that they suck and that could not be further from the truth. They are going to give Iran a run for their money for first place in this group. I actually think Uzbekistan, if I want to do a hot take, which I don't I don't know if I've done a hot take, you guys let me know in the comments. I think Uz the Uzbeks win this group. I really do. I think Iran, man, they're an old team. I think they're on the decline. Not a lot of players on the come up. Basically completely relying on Taremi and Asmoon to do anything offensively. I think the Uzbeks can get it done. Next up, we got Group F, which is Iraq, Vietnam, the Philippines, and either Indonesia or Brunei. This is a very interesting group. You could potentially have three Southeast Asian nations if Indonesia win, which I fully, fully expect them to do. The Philippines and Indonesia are pretty similar, like power level, in my opinion. I honestly have no idea how Indonesia ended up being the qualifying team, the pot four team, like... I don't know, their their string of results must be terrible recently. It's kind of funny because this entire group is pretty much the AFF Cup, just all over again. Um, and in that tournament, Indonesia did beat the Philippines 2-1, and then Vietnam eventually beat Indonesia 2-0 on aggregate. So there's a lot of revenge here. I actually think, from a competitive standpoint, this is probably the closest group that I've seen so far. And, and what I mean by that is all four teams could finish in the top two. I think Iraq are firmly the best team. But I think Vietnam, man, like, don't sleep on these boys. They, they had a very promising, I'm not going to say successful, but promising qualifying campaign. They got Philippe Trossier as their head coach, former Japanese national team manager who won the Asian Cup back in the Stone Age. But still, he did win the Asian Cup. Who knows what they're going to be able to do? I think this group is going to be one of those situations where the home team just keeps winning and then the away team loses every single one of these Southeast Asian fixtures. Any Iraqi fans, let me know in the comments. I don't even know if we have Iraqi fans following Dead Ball TV, but if we do, shout out to y'all. I have to think the expectation is to finish first, although I think it's going to be very, very close. Super exciting group, though. Overall, Group F, absolute banger. Group G, we got Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Tajikistan, and either Cambodia. Cambodia or Pakistan. Those pot four teams are down bad. I mean, both of them getting absolutely bodied, I think, by the rest of these guys. Tajikistan are about to make their Asian Cup debut in January of next year. By the way, hit subscribe because I'm doing a live stream of reaction to almost every single game at the Asian Cup. Every single match day will have a video. Guys, you need to hit subscribe. I do not want you to miss that. I'm going to have to be drinking so much caffeine, getting up early to watch those games, but it's worth it, and I want you guys to, you know, enjoy the whole process and the, and the whole tournament along with me. So so definitely hit subscribe. Anyways, the Jordanians are tough as well. I think they got a new manager recently, so I'm not really sure how that's going to take them. But I think they're like firmly a top 12 Asian national team. They will give the Saudis some trouble. Speaking of Saudi Arabia, though, if the rumors are true and Roberto Mancini has been appointed or is going to be appointed Saudi Arabian national team manager... In the next few days, then they're cooking up something really good over there in the desert. It's pretty rare in international football that I look at an appointment and I say, damn, that is a statement of intent, but Mancini to the Saudis... That is absolutely massive. And he's got big shoes to fill because Irv Renard did a good job. Obviously, the goal was to make it to the knockouts of the World Cup. Ultimately, we're unable to do so. But still, man, this is, this is a potentially 
scary team. I've always been a guy who sells on the Saudi stock. I just think that they're qualifying merchants. I think as soon as knockout football starts, they kind of fall apart. But this is uh, this is qualifying football, so I fully expect them to finish first. I think they're going to blitz most of the group, to be honest. Tajikistan and Jordan, there's going to be some competition there for number two, but uh, I think the Jordanians pull it out. Next up, we got Group H, and there's a lot going on here because we have two qualifying teams, uh, not just one like with the other groups. The pot one team is the United Arab Emirates. Very underrated team. Very good team. Next up, we got Bahrain. Pretty similar to Jordan. I think they're like on a comparable level. Then we got the winner of Yemen versus Sri Lanka. Is that what I'm looking at here? It is Yemen versus Sri Lanka. That is crazy. And the winner of Nepal versus Laos. Fun fact, one of my ex-girlfriends is from Laos. So in an act of solidarity, I will be pulling for the Laotian national team to somehow have a miracle here and finish in the qualifying spot because I really think they're they're absolutely cooked. Same with Yemen. I'm honestly kind of shocked that the Yemenis even have a national team just given what's going on in the country. The fact that they can still field the team is commendable. No idea about Sri Lanka. Can't say a single thing about that national team. I'm sure India probably beats up on them quite frequently. And uh, Nepal, again, oof. Not a lot of quality there. The UAE and Bahrain are really in a two-horse race here. Um, I just do not see a challenger from any of the other four possible teams. They did make it to the semifinals of the Arabian Cup, a tournament that Iraq ultimately won, and they beat Syria 1-0 in a friendly recently. So, you know, I, I think they could steal a game from the UAE. I don't really think the UAE are invincible. I think they're much better once knockout football starts. I think they're one of those teams. So who knows? Maybe Bahrain finishes first. Um... But I don't think so. I have UAE finishing top. Last group, guys. This has been a marathon, hasn't it? Group I. Didn't even know we got up to group I. We got Australia, Palestine, Lebanon, and the winner of the Maldives versus Bangladesh. You know what was the first thing that stood out when I was reading these countries? Is the travel. Getting from Palestine to Australia and then flying back to Lebanon potentially for a game is going to be absolute hell for all of these teams involved. Australia just geographically just completely F up every single like qualifying process they're a part of. They're so far away from everybody. Like even Japan is not really that close. So wow, man, they're gonna be really racking up the kilometers. I I I mean, global warming is probably an issue because of the Asian qualifiers um looking at this table what is going to be extremely interesting is the palestine lebanon clash because palestinians again similar to the indians very very bullish on their national team they think that they're disrespected they think that they don't get spoken about enough that they're a very good team within asian football they did qualify for back-to-back -back asian cups uh they were eliminated in round two of 2022 but hey maybe this time It'll be different, and maybe they do qualify for the third round. I think they got a little screwed here with the other teams that are around them, though. I don't see Australia dropping a single point to Palestine, and I think the Lebanese were very, how do I say, unlucky in some of their qualifiers last time around against uh, against Iran, namely conceding two really late goals. Who knows what could happen this time around? I know Lebanon, from what I'm understanding, are the pot three team. I think that they could overtake the Palestinians, and you know what? I think they will. I think the top two teams are going to be Australia and Lebanon, Palestine, I'm sorry, I just haven't seen enough, and I don't think that they have the team uh, necessary to, to make it to the World Cup. I think they will qualify again, most likely, as one of the best third-place teams for the, what would it be, 2027 Asian Cup, but I, I don't know. I think they're fighting an uphill battle to make it to round three. I'm going to go ahead and go through all the groups just one by one and give a Jack's excitement grade, we can call it that. Uh, <laughs> How much I'm looking forward to watching this group. You guys let me know in the comments. Best group and worst group. You can define that however you want down below. Group A, I'm going to give it a solid C. I think uh, Qatar being the pot one team is a tragedy. I think they play terrible football. Not excited to watch Kuwait. Really not excited to watch Afghanistan. And uh, really the only team that might be exciting here is India. I keep hearing it from you guys in the comments. So I'm going to be watching with my, my notepad, my pen. I'm going to be taking notes. I have high expectations for India. Group B, I'm going to give it probably a B, uh, maybe even a B plus. Y'all know I love Japan, so definitely some bias there. I think Syria will be a competitive team. I think North Korea, again, not because of talent, but because of circumstance, 
geopolitical tension, those are going to be very interesting games to watch. And then Myanmar, I mean, God help them. Group C, I'm going to give this one a B plus as well. I think South Korea, China is going to be exciting. I think Thailand have a lot to offer as a pot three team. I think we could potentially see some upsets. And then especially with Singapore coming in as the favorite, at least for the pot four team. There's some storylines here. Group D, I'm giving this one a straight F, bro. This is trash. It's a terrible group. There's no excitement to be had whatsoever. Again, I'm not trying to disrespect the fans of any of these countries, but this is my grade. This is how much I'm looking forward to watching this, and this is absolutely terrible given the players, given the play style, given the fourth place teams. I mean, this is this is bad. Group E, I'm going to give it a B plus because I think the battle for the top spot is going to be very close and very entertaining if it was a different pot three team instead of Turkmenistan maybe a Lebanon or a Thailand something like that it might have been an A group F I'm gonna give this one an A because I think that it's going to be very unpredictable again Iraq definitely the favorites I think they've been playing some really good football recently some really really talented players on that team and I think just the amount of Southeast Asian rivalries going on in this alone is gonna make it sick all these teams have played each other recently in 2022 they're always playing each other they know how each other plays it's going to be intense. It's going to be heated. I think it's great. I think it's great. A. With Group G, I'm going to give it a C plus. I think that the Saudis, if they appoint Mancini, are that's reason to watch for that alone. But the rest of the group, Tajikistan, not very exciting football. Cambodia, just straight cannon fodder. And Jordan, I don't really know much about their play style. So I think C plus is fair. Group H, I'm going to have to give this one a C minus, maybe even a D plus. I rate UAE very highly. I think Bahrain are a very good team, but I don't rate how they play football. And because of that, I don't know how many of these games I'm going to watch. And lastly, Group I. I'm going to give this one a B. I think that the Lebanon-Palestine games are going to be super intense. I'm very curious if any of these teams can sneak points off of Australia. Um, I think it's possible, given the insane travel in this group, it could definitely happen. So that's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. And make sure you check out our social media links down below in the description of this video. You can jump on the Discord and talk ball with me and other people who love Asian football. I appreciate you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.